Hello, you are watching Shalom World News. I'm Rudy McLennan coming to you from Glasgow, Scotland. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. Pope Francis is invoking the intercession of the Blessed Virgin to restore peace and reconciliation in Honduras. That's after an incident of gang violence at a women's penitentiary centre in the Latin American nation on June the 20th. That incident left more than 40 inmates dead. On Sunday, the Holy Father invoked the nation's patroness, Our Lady of Suyapa, for peace and healing in the nation while expressing his sadness over the incident. Meanwhile, Honduran President Jomara Castro said the violence was orchestrated by gang members with the knowledge and acquiescence of security authorities. Calling the event monstrous, he promised to take tough action. The government also imposed curfews in two northern cities on Sunday after more than 20 people were killed in separate incidents. A group of pro-life leaders rallied hundreds to the Lincoln Memorial Steps in Washington DC on Saturday to commemorate the first anniversary of the repealing of Roe v Wade, which legalised abortion in the United States in 1973. They said they were committed to the fight for complete legal protection for the unborn from the moment of conception in all 50 American states. Students for Life of America President Kristen Hawkins said they are living in a divided America where a person's location determines if they will survive. She said the 14th Amendment's Equal Justice Clauses should also be applied to those in the womb. Republican presidential candidate Mike Pence said he would stand for babies and their unalienable right to life. He also said pro-life supporters should advance the cause of adoption in the United States. US President Joe Biden has signed a wide-ranging executive order to expand access to contraception. The White House made the announcement one day before the first anniversary of the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. The executive order is intended to increase access to contraceptives over the counter, reduce the cost of contraceptives and expand access for veterans and students. It also directs the Treasury, Labour and Health and Human Services Secretaries to consider new guidance to ensure that private health insurance covers all Food and Drug Administration approved contraceptives without cost sharing. Another part of the executive order directs Health and Human Services to research additional ways to expand access to contraceptives. A United Nations report reveals that almost 4 million people in Afghanistan use drugs and most of the nation's drug treatment and rehabilitation facilities are struggling to cope with the enormity of the crisis. The report calls the crisis among the greatest threats facing the Afghan capital city of Kabul. International financing has dried up since the Taliban took power in 2021, leaving underpaid, ill-trained staff to care for patients in many of the healthcare facilities across the nation. The report also shows that the nation is one of the world's top producers of heroin and methamphetamine, with the majority of it being exported outside the country. Afghanistan supplies almost 80% of the world's opium, making it the top supplier in the world. Against the backdrop of an aborted mutiny in Russia over the weekend, Moscow Mayor Sergei Sobyanin said he is cancelling a counter-terrorism regime in the nation's capital. This comes after the Wagner mercenary group's head Yevgeny Prigozhin ordered his men to stop marching to Moscow and retreat instead. Following the intervention of Belarusian dictator Alexander Lukashenko, Prigozhin ordered his troops to turn back to avoid bloodshed. The Kremlin has said that the head of the mercenary unit will also leave for Belarus. According to some international observers, the image of President Vladimir Putin of Russia has been dented and the aborted coup reveals the cracks in Moscow's military might caused in part by the war in Ukraine. According to European Union foreign policy chief Josep Borrell, the Russian political system is showing fragility and its military power is cracking. The Organization of American States has come out with a resolution calling on Nicaragua to desist from all human rights violations and release all political prisoners. The resolution was led by the United States, Canada, Chile and Costa Rica on Friday. In the resolution, the nations are urging the Daniel Ortega regime to respect religious freedom as well as the right to freedom of expression. The group's Inter-American Commission on Human Rights also made several requests to extend protections for political prisoners and indigenous peoples. The Commission also urged the Inter-American Court of Human Rights to extend these measures to include individuals such as Bishop Rolando Alvarez, 
who is facing an extremely serious and urgent risk of irreparable harm to his rights. The bishop is being held in detention after he expressed disagreement with the government's policies. Much to the annoyance of the regime, he also refused to seek exile abroad. The Maltese government is backing down on a law that permits abortions when the mother's health is said to be at risk. The move to permit abortion under certain circumstances sparked opposition from pro-lifers who said the definition of a health risk was too broad. The health minister said the bill was being amended so that the termination of pregnancy occurs only when a mother's life is in danger, once all other possible treatment has been exhausted. This procedure must be agreed upon by three doctors and may only occur in a licensed clinic. However, abortion will remain illegal under all other circumstances, including rape, incest and severe fetal abnormalities. Malta continues to have the most protective of laws for the unborn in Europe, with a Catholic tradition and culture influencing the abortion debate. Pope Francis has expressed his gratitude to the local organisers of the upcoming World Youth Day in Portugal's Lisbon. Through a video message, the Holy Father made known his appreciation for their outstanding contributions as they work for a great cause. The pontiff also urged them to never give up hope. Pope Francis travels to Portugal on the 2nd of August. He will participate in the opening ceremony, hear some of the participants' confessions and join young people for lunch. The Holy Father will also preside over the concluding Mass on the 6th of August before returning to Rome. In the United States, investigators are probing the cause of a fire that broke out in a Catholic church in Florida on Saturday night. The Orlando Fire Department's arson investigation team and the Florida State Fire Marshal are conducting the investigation into the fire outbreak in Incarnation Catholic Church. When the fire broke out on Saturday night, the church was empty and no injuries were reported. As soon as flames were noticed, firefighters rushed to the scene and quickly extinguished the fire. The church did, however, lose some paintings and statues in the blaze. The probe will also seek to find out if the fire was the result of an act of arson. Ever since the repealing of Roe v. Wade by the US Supreme Court last year, Catholic churches across America have been witnessing a spurt in attacks, including arson. In the US state of Pennsylvania, the governor has defended school choice, which allows for parents to receive state-funded or school district-funded scholarships, allowing children to attend private schools. On Friday, Josh Shapiro defended school choice as a way for parents to make sure that their children receive the best education. As per the scheme, parents receive school vouchers to finance the education of their children in private schools of their choice. This enables them to bring up their children in a school environment that gives importance to the family's spiritual and cultural values. This is all the more relevant in the context of controversies in the education sector regarding the teaching of gender and sexuality. Governor Shapiro said the school vouchers program is the best way to ensure that every child of God has a fair chance in his state to ensure that they have a proper education. The Attorney General of the American state of New Jersey is suing three school districts for adopting new policies related to gender dysphoric students. Matthew Platkin filed a lawsuit to challenge rules requiring teachers to inform parents if a child requests a name that does not correspond with their biological sex. The action comes after the Middletown Township, Marlborough Township and Manalapan English Town Regional Boards of Education modified and adopted policies requiring staff to notify parents about such instances. These policies were approved earlier last week. Platkin filed the three emergency lawsuits claiming that the districts were endangering the safety of so-called transgender students. As ethnic conflict simmers in the northeastern Indian state of Manipur, the Catholic bishops have designated July the 2nd as the Sunday for peace and prayer for the suffering masses. President of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of India, Archbishop Andrus Tashat, has urged religious and lay people to offer prayers and sacrifices for the restoration of peace and reconciliation in Manipur. The Archbishop has called for a Eucharistic Holy Hour in parishes to make July the 2nd more significant. In a letter, the prelate stated that more than 50,000 people have been displaced because of the violence which began in April. Houses have been torched and places of worship desecrated in the ethnic conflict involving the mostly Hindu Métis and Christian-dominant Kuki groups.
The European nation of Denmark is witnessing an intense debate on euthanasia, with a group of doctors writing an open letter protesting against assisted suicide. Physicians specialising in pain relief criticised the bid of Prime Minister Mette Frederiksen to allow active euthanasia in the country. It was on Thursday that the Prime Minister officially opened the debate to allow the procedure in the Scandinavian nation. The Danish Society for Palliative Medicine wrote a letter to the Prime Minister saying that it does not believe that active euthanasia is the solution for suffering patients. They said they are opposed to euthanasia and want expanded palliative care that helps people live with minimal suffering. They also want the best possible care until death for the terminally ill. The doctors also invited Prime Minister Frederiksen to have a discussion with them on the matter. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us again tomorrow for more. And do remember, you can always visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.